<clears throat> testing one, two, testing one, two. Thank you for uh, tuning in to uh, Thy Kingdom Come broadcast today. This is Pastor Vivalette Poole, and i um, so glad that you could join us today. Today, we're going to talk about um, what do we do when our brook dries up, and we're going to be coming from 1 Kings chapter 17, um, 1 Kings chapter 17, and we're going to begin at verse 1, and we're going to read about Elijah, Elijah, who um, uh, was a prophet of the Lord, and uh, I'll just show you some tidbits and pieces of what Elijah did uh, as a result of his brook drying up. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was in the inhabitants of the of, of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. But according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook of Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have that I have commanded, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dealt by the brook of Cherah, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Now, so he had provision. Elijah had provision. Uh, God allowed uh, the ravens to feed him, uh, to bring him food uh, in the evening and uh, food in the morning. But in, in, in verse 7, something happens to this supply. Um, and the raisin, ravens brought him bread and fish in the morning and bread and fish in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Verse 7. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. All right. And then verse 8 says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, uh, and he said, Arise and get to Zerah that belonged to Zidon and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zephyrmuth. And when he came to that, uh, the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was uh, there and gathering sticks. And she, he called unto her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am preparing or gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do this <clears throat> as thou said, but make me a, therefore a little cake first and bring it unto me and after the, make it for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went in and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and in her, and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. We're going to start right there. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about what we do when our brook dries up. And as you know, uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, our brook. And uh, a lot of us, uh, 
have gone through, um, not, not, not me in particular, but there have been some people I know that have gone through the government shutdown and went through the fact that where their brook did dry up their, their, their governmental paychecks did not, uh, you know, um, um, come, come speedily. Uh, some people didn't get paid. And as a result, the source that they normally get their income dried up. Amen. And uh, I thank the Lord because as we talk about our book, our, our brook drying up and our um, brook uh, running dry and thank God for uh, Wango watching, you know, my cousin, praise God. And well, Willie Rogers watching today. Thank God for you and you praise God. And we're glad to have you and glad that you're joining us. I just wanted to uh, say this is our first live broadcast and I want to thank you all for joining me today, but we want to talk about what happens when our brook runs dry? And a lot of us, if you live long enough, your brook will dry up. If you live long enough, you know, you're going to have some lack. Something's going to happen uh, to you that will allow for some things not to go right in your life. And uh, one of the things in particular I wanted to look at and pay attention to was Elijah and how that Elijah was a prophet of the Lord. But you know, he had to have an ear to hear what God was saying to him. And so in this passage, we look at where God had fed him for a while and he was getting a great supply. And you know how it is. We're used to getting that supply. We're used to God, you know, taking care of us. And so he was getting fed by the ravens and he was getting fed by the water from the brook. But after a while, that brook ran out. So what happened as a result of that brook uh, running out and the brook uh, running dry. What happens when, as a result of that, Elijah, when he saw that his brook had ran out, you realize he couldn't drink anymore. The ravens probably stopped coming too. They stopped coming. So he was on a fast. And I want us to understand today what happens because I've been unemployed before. I've been to where I didn't have income coming in several different times. And I believe, you know, I believe that Elijah began to seek the face of God. First of all, we need a word. We need a word from God. And this is why we go on the fast. This is why we go without food or water, because we don't know what else to do. And, you know, Elijah, yeah, I believe he lived by the seat of his pants. So wherever God told him to go, that's where he was going to go. Wherever God told him to be, that's where he was going to be. And as a result, he fasted. Because he had to fast because he didn't have a choice. He didn't have any more water coming from the brook. The ravens weren't coming anymore. And so as a result, he fasted. And he fasted. Why? He fasted for a word from God. He fasted so he could get the next instruction from the Lord. And so as we think about how it is when we get to where our back is up against the wall and we don't know what to do, God begins to uh, 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 talk to us. But we got to be where we can hear what he's saying. And the best way to hear the voice of God is to uh, 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 begin to uh, hear. The best way to hear the voice of God is by uh, turning your plate down, as they say, going without food or water. Because then we guaranteed that the Lord, see, uh, Elijah began to listen, begin to hear or try to listen for the next instruction. And that's what we have to do. We get to where we're at a point where we don't know what to do next. The best thing to do is to wait on God, to wait and to listen for his voice. And this is exactly what Elijah did while he was going through his test and his trial. And he didn't know what to do next. He had been getting fed by the ravens and been getting fed by the brook. And God told him, you know, where to go uh, 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 next as a result of his fasting and his prayer. And uh, as he went to the, once he went to the brook uh, and, and realized there was no water there and the ravens weren't coming anymore, he got a word. As soon as we uh, obey the voice of God and begin to seek his face, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. Then comes the provision. Then comes the blessing. Then comes the breakthrough. Then comes deliverance. 
But it doesn't happen until we begin to seek the face of God. And I believe Elijah had to seek God for a word. Amen. Right in the midst there. You don't read it there, but it's there where Elijah had to seek God's face to get the next instruction, to get the next uh, 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 thing that uh, he had to do. Because Elijah could have died right there by the brook. But because he had an open ear to what God was going to say next, God told him, he told him in verse eight, he said, the word of the Lord came unto him saying, arise and get thee to Zephyrah, which is belongeth to Z Zidon and the well there. And behold, I commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now, look, he commanded the ravens, first of all. He commanded the ravens to come and take care of Elijah. And now, after he seeks the face of God again, God takes him to a widow woman. Well, he actually tells him to go to a widow woman. Now, this is great because in our life, our, you know, the word of the Lord says, a steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. And so we need to understand that we shouldn't move. We shouldn't go any further until we can hear from God. If we're at a point where we don't know where our next meal is coming from, we're at a point where we don't know where, our, you know, what's going to happen next in our life. And we need a word from God. The first thing to do is stop what we're doing and just stay right where we're at. Be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. And so that's what Elijah did. And God directed him to the house of the widow woman. He arose and went. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And a widow woman said, I ain't got nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what you mean bring you what? I ain't got nothing. There ain't nothing in there. I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. There is nothing in my house. What, what are you saying? I, 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 there's nothing in. He said, what do you have in your house? And, and today, that's what we need to think about today. What do we have? You know, our brook dries up. And what do we do? We reach out to God. Now this, this is by all, uh, basically this is by, you know, this is the old Testament, but today we got the new Testament and we talk about, you know, rivers of living water springing up, you know, today, praise God, we may not have a brook. It may not be a brook that dries up. It might be our unemployment check that, that goes bad or, or we don't have it anymore, or it may be our job that we lose. It could be a lot of things. Uh, it could be a relationship. Uh, uh, it could be a lot of things that dry up in our life. But what we need to understand today is we need to seek the Lord for a word. I said we need to seek the word, the Lord for a word without seeking God for a word. You're not going to get any further than the last thing he told you. So. When Elijah began to, and it's not there, you don't see it there, but you realize that when your sources run out, see, I used to, <laughs> I have been unemployed quite a few times in my life. And the first thing I remember doing is laying, you know, castrate before the Lord on my bed many, many days and pr praying and fasting, going without food, going without water to ask God, okay, where do you want me to go? Because see, I could have just started applying for applications and I did just start applying for applications. But sometimes the Lord, most of the time, it wasn't what I did. It wasn't where I went, but it was what God told me to do to get to my next destination, to get to my next blessing, to get to my next prosperity level. I had to obey God and do what God was telling me to do. And so when we think about being led by the spirit of God, those that are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. And he promised that he would direct and delight in our way. The steps of a, 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 a good man are ordered by the Lord. A righteous man are ordered by the Lord. We begin to realize that God in his goodness and mercy wants to talk to us, but we got to be in a place to hear him. We got to be in a place to hear the word of the Lord, to get our next blessing, our next breakthrough, 
And we got to be sometimes empty. We need to be empty. We need to be empty. We need to be focused on, okay, God, what do you want me to do next? And when you got your back up against the wall, don't know what, it, what to do next. The only thing to do is to focus on the Lord, to get in the word, to hear the word of God, to pray, to fast and ask God, okay, God, I'm here. Where do you want me to go from here? What do you want me to do next? Some of us are, you know, church leaders and we were asking God, okay, God, what do you want me to do next? Which way do you want me to go? How do you want me to do this? And I think it's best for us to ask God instead of going off on, because Elijah could have just left and went wherever he wanted to go. But he, 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 I believe he stopped and he listened for God's voice. He listened to what to do next. And so many times, this is where we mess up. This is where, this is why, you know, we're wondering and not knowing and not having the breakthrough of God because we don't stop and, and be still and listen and get in our secret closet, in our secret place to hear a word from God. Praise God. So now as I go on, we're going to talk about the widow woman and how when she, you know, she was claiming she didn't have anything but a barrel of meal. Uh, a barrel of meal is all she had, and she was gonna have that, and a, and and her little cruise of oil, and and make that one, you know, one little cake, and her son and her, they were gonna die. You know, they were in the midst of a family famine in the land. That's one thing to understand. And you know, today I can say we're in a famine. Today we're in the famine of a of, of uh, as far as in many many countries, and even in the United States, we're not, you know, we're not as prosperous as we once were. And so we're in a famine in the land for the word of God. We're in the famine of the land from, you know, from getting the, the, uh, the, uh, the love and the, the uh, joy in our families that we used to have. That famine is, is there. The word of God is needed. But a lot of times because we don't have faith enough to believe that God can use what's in us. You know, I say all the time, the kingdom of God is in us. The kingdom of God is in you. And it is in you. But how do we get the kingdom of God to come out and give us a breakthrough? What do we do to, to keep the breakthrough of God from happening? Or allow the breakthrough of God to, to come and manifest in our life? Well, I believe it has something to do with our prayer life. Oh, I know it has a lot to do with how we pray and what we do on a daily basis. How we Go before God in prayer. And I believe sometimes we need to use our prayer language, speaking in tongues and, 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 and so that the devil don't know what we're talking about. But we need to we need to draw on our well of water that's inside of us so it'll come outside. See, the woman at the well, she was gathering sticks and she said, well, I don't I don't have very much in my house. I don't have anything, but we have to use what we have. Come on, somebody. We got to use what we have. Whatever God has given us, it's enough to get us to the next breakthrough. It's enough to get us to the next blessing. It's enough to get us through to the, to the new beginning that God is trying to bring upon us. It's not where you are right now. It's not where you are right now, but it's where God is taking you. If God is taking you to the next level. And sometimes the next level, we can't see it until we hear from God. We don't know what God is doing. All we know is he's taking us step by step, little by little. Eventually, we're going to reach our destination. Amen. So it's all about hearing from God. But as she went and obeyed, it's also about obedience. Come on, somebody. When the widow woman went into her house and obeyed Elijah, the prophet of the Lord and went to bake that cake out of that last little barrel of meal she had. And she was going to just take it. She was going to be selfish and get, you know, but I got news for you. That little bit of money that you got, that little bit of whatever it is, that little bit of food you got left in the pantry, whatever you got in your house, God can take that little and use it and make it a lot. You don't believe it? You read in Matthew where he fed the 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. God is able to do the impossible in your life. He's able to get take the little bit that you got 
and spread it out, make it huge. Do you know when she obeyed Elijah, that that cru uh, cru cruise of oil and that barrel of meal did not run out. It didn't run out. It kept it, it, it kept going. And that's because when you take care of God's people, when you get in your mindset and I'm going to give to my local church, I'm going I'm going to fast, I'm going to pray and I'm going to tithe and I'm going to give an offering and I'm going to sow a seed. God begins to open. You know how I made it when I was out of out of a job? I would sow seeds into different ministries. And as a result, and I didn't have a whole lot. I'd be like, Lord, I don't know. You know, this is I'm taking my last. This is my last. And, you know, I don't know how we're going to. But I'm going to take this twenty dollars. I'm going to take this $10 and I'm going to sow it. It wasn't much. I just sowed what I had into ministries. And when I did, my God, I began to see checks come in the mail. I began to see uh, 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 unemployment checks come in the mail. I began to see stuff come that I didn't expect to, to come. It was because I obeyed God. I had to hear a word from God. I had to pay attention to his voice. And after that, the blessing came, but it didn't come until I heard his voice and I was obedient to what God told me to do. Now, God may tell you through somebody what to do, and then God may talk to you personally and tell you what to do, but you got to be able to hear the voice of the Lord. You, you got to be able to hear what God is saying to you today. Now, God is using me today. He could be using anybody, but he's using me today to tell you what to do when your brook dries up. And so we need to realize today that we're in a perilous time where men are lovers of their own self, boastful, proud, unthankful, ungodly, unholy. Praise God. But after you look at the situation, we can't do anything but depend on Jesus. He's the brook that never runs dry. He's the well of living water. Praise God. He's the one that sits high and looks low and looking at all the nations, looking at the president. He's looking at the Congress, the senators. He's looking at everything that's going on in our world. Amen. But it's all about knowing him because he's the one that is our source. It's not your job. It's not your paycheck. It's not your skills and your abilities and your college degree and your college education, your Ph.D. Your source is Christ. Your source is Jesus, and he's the one that's going to help you keep your brook flowing. He's going to help you keep food on the table, shelter over your head in the time of in perilous times like these. Amen. We have to realize today that we, you know, if we, we don't try to hear from God, we're, we're going to be lacking. Amen. Because these are these are times. These are times. These are the last and evil days. And men are lovers that are of their own self. It's all about money. Praise God. It's all about stuff. Other people's stuff. You got preachers today that want to take this message and say, if you give to me, then God will bless you, blah, blah, blah. And it could be true. But nevertheless, this is for you to draw off what's in your house, what's in you. Praise God. Because that's what the widow woman had to do. And she had to be obedient to what God told her to do. But she also had to draw off of what she had in her home. So you may have abilities and skills. You may be a writer. You may love to sing. But God has your miracle. He has your breakthrough. And it's in your house. It's in your house. Praise God. I thank the Lord because as a result of just looking at this and, and seeing what we do when our brook runs dry, it took me way back, you know, to where when I did when I was unemployed and didn't have anything, uh, you know, God was able to uh, 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 make a way. And when I say make a way, it was miraculous because it was nothing I was expecting. Praise God! Uh, it was it was a great uh, blessing to be able to say that I've had a lot of jobs that had let me go. I was a temporary. I was a contract. I worked. You know, from job to job, every six months I was out of work because, you know, I didn't have sufficient income because that job would give out. And then after that, I have to wait and pray and ask God for another job. But I thank God it's not like that anymore. Praise God. Because when God blesses you, he'll bless you the way your, 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 your brook don't dry up. 
But sometimes he'll put you in a place where you got to seek him. Because if he puts you in a place where, you know, where you got to seek him, that's his way to, to grow you up and to fill you up full of his spirit and to help you to grow and get closer to him. Without that test and trial, I don't think that I would be where I'm at today. Praise God. So I thank God because I want I want you to understand today that there's nothing that's too hard for God. Absolutely nothing. And when you get to where your back is against the wall and you don't know what to do, you don't know where your next meal is coming from. You don't know how you're going to pay that bill. You don't know, you know, you, you, you know, you thought your taxes was going to, you know, be an abundant. And this year you look and you say, oh, my goodness, I'm paying this year. You know, whatever that you're going through today, you need to realize that God is a God that's more than enough. If he can do it for the widow one and he can do it for Elijah. He can do it for me and you. All we have to do is pull on the anointing inside of us. I said, draw on that live, live the, the living river of water inside of you. Begin to pray and ask God to help you be able to hear his voice. Amen. The biggest problem in the world today, I believe if we could just hear from God, all the problems in the world would just disappear. But we got to be obedient. We got to do what God tells us to do. There's no way that we're going to solve anything in our life or in the world without hearing from God. We need a word today from God. We need to be able to hear a word, a word that will change our life. And one word from God will change you forever if you just are able to listen and hear him. Just able to pick up on. And sometimes God will tell you stuff that's kind of unusual. He said, wait a minute. So wait, are you give give them this. Why? Sometimes it's unusual. But whatever God tells you to do, be able to be obedient and listen. And, and like the widow woman, because she was like, wait a minute, me and my son, we're going to eat this and die. We, What do you mean? Make you something. We're we getting ready. You know, but had she had a mind to just say, you know, I, I, I don't believe you. It's about your belief system. It's according to your faith. What do you believe? Do you think God brought you this far to leave you? He didn't bring you this far to leave you. And so God wants you to understand today that don't worry. He's with you. He's always, he's the provider. He's Jehovah Jireh, your provider. And as long as you serve him, as long as you are obeying him and doing what he says and seeking his face, he's going to take care of you. He's going to make sure you have what you're supposed to have. Amen. But it, like I said, you got to have a mind to want to serve him and be obedient. Praise God. Because like I said before, it's about hearing from God. It's about being obedient to him and to his word. So I thank God for the lesson today. Praise God. I'm going to end today. But I thank you for those that have been watching and have been listening uh, uh, to this message. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Amen. I didn't want to take it, take too much of your time, but I do want to have a brief prayer with those of, of you that are watching and those that we, you that will be watching later on. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, I ask that you touch the listeners today. God, their, their brook could be a healing in their body that they need. Oh God, but in the name of Jesus, I ask you to heal everybody under the sound of my voice. They may be in a hospital bed, Wherever they are, whatever they're doing, they could be in prison. Wherever they are right now, God, you promised that you would be Jehovah Jireh. You promised that you would take care of us. You promised that we trusted you, that you would come through for us. And God, so I thank you today because no matter what we're going through, you are the God that is more than enough. You fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. You can do it for us today. So God, I ask you in Jesus name to touch the listeners today, touch their hearts and let them know that you love them. Let them know we love them. Let, let them know today that there's nothing that's too hard for you. There's nothing that's Lord, as we think about relationships, God, it's, it's on my heart about relationships. Somebody's going through something in a relationship. Oh God, touch that husband, that man, that woman, God, whoever this is, God, I ask you to heal their home, heal their marriage. Heal their, Lord, maybe somebody's desiring them to be married or maybe desiring a mate. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, you're, there's nothing too hard for you. 
God, I ask you to touch and allow them to meet up with the right one, the God-fearing man, woman of God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, and I ask you in Jesus' name that you touch every home and make it prosperous. God, help us to be able to hear your voice on this morning. Help us to be able to be obedient to what you tell us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And God, also, I ask that you bless this ministry, make it prosperous, and help us to redeem the days because they are evil. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you so much for tuning in and remember that the power of the kingdom of God is in you. Praise God. Thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for watching.